unite the generations apart are professional boxers. One a former champion, and the other, in the opinion of many people, a champion of the not too distant future. Eric Boone, one time golden boy of British boxing, is 56 and works as a representative for a company making wooden pallets. He still lives in his native Cambridgeshire at Wickham, not far from his hometown of Chatteris, where he started fighting at the age of 12. At 14, he turned pro and won his first fight at Warboys Village Hall for a purse of three and six, in today's terms, 17 and a half P. At 15, Boone, a blacksmith's apprentice, was given his first London fight by Jack Solomons. Boone cycled the 71 miles to London, fought a draw with young Higgins of Stepney, collected two pounds, and cycled back to Chatteris. But the big money did come. In 20 years of professional boxing, Boone's whirlwind fists earned him hundreds of thousands of pounds. He had 438 fights, he won about 400. He won three British championship fights in 12 months and made the Lonsdale belt his own. At his peak, Boy Boone had a fantastic following. Special trains decked with banners for Boone carried his cheering fans from Peterborough, Cambridge and Chatteris. Those who saw it will tell you that Boone's fight with Danahar in defence of the lightweight title was the best of the century. It was originally planned as a private fight at the National Sporting Club with members paying £250 a seat. But the townsfolk of Chatteris, supported by London's East End boxing fans, threatened to march on Westminster unless the fight was held in public. It ended at Haringey, Boone winning on a technical knockout. It was the peak of Boone's career. The war stopped him going after the world title. Dave Boy Green is 22, a farm worker from Chatteris, and is being hailed today as one of the most exciting contenders in British boxing. His manager, Andy Smith, believes that Green will be light welterweight champion of this country within weeks. Green began boxing at 14. He had 130 amateur bouts and he reached the ABA national semi-finals in 1974, losing to the eventual winner, Terry Waller. Boy Green turned professional in August 1974. He's won all 14 of his fights so far, 11 of them inside the distance. He works hard for that success. For three weeks before every fight, he gets up at half past four in the morning and runs for five miles before driving round, picking up workers. After a full day on the farm, he goes into the gym to train at night. He's already getting the kind of fanatical backering from Chatteris that Boy Boone had nearly 40 years ago. In February this year, Green's fans paid two and a half thousand pounds for tickets to watch him fight at the Royal Albert Hall. These are the fans who are convinced that Chatteris has produced another golden boy. Well, welcome, Eric, and welcome, Dave, to Generations Apart. And we're talking about two golden boys, and I'm just wondering why it is that Chatteris, and I don't want to be rude to the small town of Chatteris, but hasn't been put on the map too often, I suspect, but has been put on the map twice in 40 years by yourselves, two very famous boxers. And I'm just wondering why it is that Chatteris should come up with two good boxers like yourselves. you any ideas about that, Eric? Mm, not really, Harry. I've often uh, thought about it, but... Um Years ago, in, in 39, 38, 39, they did have a really remarkably good uh, amateur boxing team. And there were, I suppose, about 20 or possibly 30 really good fighters that would have, would have really have held their own anywhere. And uh, outside boxing, we had a, a couple of uh, footballers down there. There was Tommy Welsh, a great footballer, uh, Matthew Marnie, another great footballer. Both had... Uh, trials for professional teams and uh, were accepted, but they wouldn't leave Jatras. Um, there's been uh, other other um, people in different sports, of course, but um, we are the only two in, in, in boxing. Let's just compare that with, with you, Dave. I mean, today, <coughs> when you were an amateur with the Chatteris Amateur Boxing Club, were you aware that there were a lot of other useful boxers around in the district or not? Well, no, not really. It was When I first started boxing, there was a quite a lot of boys in the Chatteris club, but when I, when I turned professional, just before I turned professional, there was nobody left only myself in the club. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be, I don't want to put you in bad with the, uh, the Chatteris people, Eric, but I did hear you say once that uh, the reason that uh, you, you, you were so good uh, from Chatteris was that there wasn't too much to do in the place. It was a bit quiet and you had to get out and do something. <laughs> well, um, when I started, when I, when I first started about 36, 35, 36, uh, there, re there really was nothing to do. Uh, we had a wonderful character down there, Arthur Binder, uh, who got all us 
took all, our, all our, uh, the, us kids off the streets and uh, more or less shepherded us into the amateur boxing team and uh, made us fight. Uh, but we, we, we loved it. Had you been Certainly interested enjoyed. in boxing before that, or was it simply that Arthur Binder who put the interest into you? Yes, Arthur put the interest there. We were always fighting, mind you, but uh, not in the ring. What about you, Dave? I mean, did you always want to be a boxer, or why did you take it up? Well, my friend asked me to go down the club one, one night, and look, again, like Eric just said, Arthur Binder was in charge then as the trainer, and he was sort of interested in me, and I stuck to it. And... Mm -hmm. So the same man was uh, responsible for both of you? Really, yeah. Yes. That's remarkable. Mm. Arthur yes. Binder, the, yes. the connection mm. between the two of you. Arthur was a great man. He recently died recently. Mm -hmm. Great shame. Marvellous man. So he's got a lot, uh, the boxing has got a lot to be thankful to Arthur Binder for. Well, we have. I, well, have. I certainly have, I'm sure. I think the, uh, old, uh, the old town has, because he does yes. lots of football and everything. Every sport. That's yeah. brilliant. So we've established, really, that Chatteris, in a sense, it, it owes uh, some of this success to, to this one man, Arthur Binder. A great deal, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad we've established that, because I didn't know that. Mm. Now, let's just talk a bit about uh, boxing then and boxing now, because I'm quite sure in my own mind that uh, it's a vastly different game today from what it was then, and uh, oh, yes. I would think you'd bear that out, Eric, wouldn't oh, you? Oh, yes, yes. Tell us a little bit about, <clears throat> I mean, people always talk about the good old days of British boxing, when there were so many fighters and there were so many good fighters. Were they really good old days? Uh, well, good old days. Uh, they were certainly good fighters. Uh, there were 3,000 licensed professional boxers in those days, and now there are less than 300. Uh, there was much more competition. Um, I think the kids then, or youngsters, fighters, had more of a, a, a will to win. They hated being beaten. Um, uh, they were hungry fighters. And... Um, Two pounds, three pounds, five pounds, whatever they were getting for a fight, it was a lot of money in those days. Yeah, but hungry fighters, you see, because a lot of people were hungry in the country in those days. I mean, before the war, you're talking about a country that perhaps had two to three million unemployed, mm. and presumably, if you couldn't get work, uh, you turned to anything you could do, and presumably boxing was one of those things. Mm, yes. Um, well, you, you could go to a show at the Devonshire Club on a Friday and Sunday, or the Blackfriars Ring, any of those uh, London clubs, and there'd be about uh, at least five or six fighters there, all weights, carrying their case and their, with their shorts and their boots, just hoping, praying that uh, uh, somebody wouldn't turn up so they could mm. go in and... That doesn't sound like the good old days to me. Um, and when I d said at the start of the programme that you got three and sixpence mm. for your first appearance in London, that doesn't sound like the good old days to me either. Well, there was, there was more of a... Uh, people were much nicer in those days, much, much nicer, Harry. <laughs> How do you mean much nicer? Well, uh, there wasn't all this grabbing and dog-eat-dog uh, uh, -dog business. People were much more helpful to each other and much more pleasant to each other. What, inside the sport of boxing or generally? Generally, yes, generally. Mm. Yes, I think people were much nicer in those days. Is it true, um, I, I, you hear so many stories from old fighters about the way they were paid and how badly they were paid, that, uh, that uh, the winner got three and sixpence, but the loser sometimes didn't get very much. Is, is that right? Oh, yes, that, that's, that's quite true. Uh, at some halls, at some of the old timers, uh, Ted Kid Lewis, for instance, great fighter, great man, uh, he told me that um, uh, for several of his fights, uh, the loser got a meat pie. <laughs> now, you say, I, I refuse to believe those are <laughs> good true. old days. Now, Dave, let's have a picture of you. Now, you're the modern generation, and you know, you know a lot of uh, what there is to know about boxing today. Now, having heard that, uh, how do you compare it with boxing today? Well, I think I want more than a meat pie. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, when you turned pro and you had your first pro fight, you got a lot more than three and six months, oh, didn't yes. you? I heard, in fact, that you got, you got a hundred pounds for your first fight. Yeah. Am I right? I don't want to inquire yeah. too much into your finances, but... Uh, that's about right, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, so that's vastly different, even given inflation, isn't it? Yeah. Now, what, what about, you see, Eric saying that the people in those days were nicer. Um, do, you, do you think that's right? I mean, what's your impression of the world about... Well, I think today? people in them days were more content, you know, because... Um, but, no, I don't think... It, no difference, really. Are you no. a hungry fighter? Have you got this will to win that Eric oh, was yeah. talking about? You have. Just tell us a little bit about that. I mean, now, do you see Chatteris as a place that you've got to get away from? You've got to go and make a name for yourself in the world. Is that how you feel about it? Yeah, I want, I want to be somebody in life, you know. Mm -hmm. Make a name for myself. And, and you, can, you find boxing, perhaps, is the only way that you can really get out and establish yourself? Well, it is now, yeah. How long do you think that you'll go on being a farm worker? Well, 
if it works all right with my box, and I'll just carry on as I am at the moment, you know. But just I wouldn't think, as you go on and up, and uh, you get more important fights, and that you've got to train hard for them, that uh, you're going to be able to mix the two for long, are you? Not really, but if I get go on better, you don't get so many fights, and you've got time on your hands where you've got to be doing something, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we've established, I think, very well already that uh, Generations Apart is really uh, truer in this case, isn't it? Because you are talking, Eric, about a vastly different world than the one oh, we yeah. know today, particularly in boxing. Um, were you anxious to get up and out of Chatteris and go and see something of the bright lights of London? No, I, I, I wasn't anxious to do that. I did it, but I wasn't anxious to do it. I didn't even look for it. Uh, no, I was back in Chatteris uh, at every opportunity. I still go back there. I love it down there. But in fact, you made your home in London... Uh, quite soon after you started to box for Jack Solomons. Didn't you? Yes, I went to live with Solomons when I was 15, I think. It was. Yes, I was 15. And I lived with Solomons for about uh, about 12 years. How long was it before you, I mean, three and six months for your first fight in London? It sounds ridiculous. How long was it before you were beginning to make what one would call decent money? Well, in two years, I, uh, I fought Jimmy Walsh. He was British lightweight champion. I was 17. Uh, I beat Walsh, I got uh, 250 quid for that, which wasn't bad. Then, a year later, when I was 18, I got um, 3,500 for the uh, for the Dan Hour fight. You see, 3,500, we're talking about 1938-39, that's, uh, that was a lot of money, though. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I mean, that's, great that's got to be, what, five times that today, I suppose. Yes, yes. I, suppose. I, was, uh, I was lucky, too, in the, um, uh, with the advertising, of course doing a lot of advertising for Bill Cream and various things, uh, Ford cars and whatnot, uh, getting a lot of money that way. And I was doing a, a variety show around the halls mm. at about 250 a week, which was a work of money. Are you conscious, Dave, of the fame of Eric Boone? Because, believe me, I mean, I presume you do know, but if you don't know, I can tell you that Eric Boone was certainly, for a time, the most famous fighter in Britain, or one of them. Um, are you conscious, as a boy from Chatteris, of the fame of Eric Boone, who also came from that place? Well, I think it makes a difference, you know, when you've, you've got a name to live up to, where a chap of Eric Boone's calibre come from. Do people often say to you, oh, come on, you've got to be as good as Eric Boone? Does it, does well, I think they compare us a lot, you know, in things. Mm -hmm. Do you but want to eventually move out of Chatteris and perhaps do what Eric did and live in London? And that's no, all I like, and I love Chatteris. No, you see, he was a bit of a bright lights boy in the end, and uh, a bit of a, go so far, so a bit of a playboy was Eric Boone. But uh, you don't have those those sort of ambitions. No, not really. No. <laughs> now I tell you the other thing that always interests me about boxing, and Eric touched on it briefly. There were three thousand professional boxers in Britain before the war. Yes. Therefore, it meant that everybody had to fight that much harder to get to the top. And the thing that fascinates me, you see, here is you, Dave, uh, fourteen fights behind you, and uh, you won't have many more fights before you're fighting for the British title against Joey Singleton. Now, Eric Boone, after you first came to London, had your first fight for Solomons, and you fought them for the title about three years later. But in those three years, as non-champion, you had something like 70-odd fights, just building up to the title fight. Yeah. I mean, that's got to be tough, hasn't it? Oh, it was, yes, it was. But uh, it's, it's an apprenticeship that I, I certainly would have, would have hated to have missed. How often did you, f I mean, how often a week would you have fought sometimes? I fought as often as three fights in five days. That's the most I had. But uh, uh, often, sometimes it was twice a week. But um, I'd want to know why if I wasn't fighting, say, if I, if I went, say, three weeks without a fight. Hmm. What, uh, what do you think about that, Dave? I mean, does, it, does that sort of shock you that anybody would have that number of professional fights? Well, no, not really. Was, in them days, there was a lot more boys boxing. And, well... I mean, if you I had to do it, presumably you'd be prepared to do it. If yeah, conditions were like that, you'd do it. I'm that sort of fighter. I've got to be in work all the time, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering how much you really know about each other. Eric, let me ask you about Dave Green now. Um, are, you, are you very much aware of what he's doing in, in the boxing game today? Oh, yes, yes. I've followed him uh, right from... The, Arthur Winder first told me about him, and uh, several other Chatteris people told me long before I met him. Um, then I saw him box as an amateur one time, and I realised he was, he had what it takes. Uh, this will to win, this hating to be beaten. Um, no, I've been, uh, I've followed him right away from, 
as the uh, first time I heard of him. You're not quite the same, Wakes, but you probably will be one of these days, because I suspect uh, young David here will probably become a welterweight one of these days, but um, you're a light welter at the moment. Apart from the will to win, Eric, do you see mm. any other similarities? Are there any similarities in style between you and David? I think so a great deal. Uh, I think I had what David's got, or he got what I had. This will to win, this hate to be beaten, uh, I, I couldn't stand it. I'd, I'd cry my eyes out if I lost a fight. And I'd work like mad uh, the next time to make sure that I didn't... Uh, uh, nothing went wrong. Um, now, David's got the, the bullet, and he's got a whack. He can really... Mm. he can really punch. Do you think of yourself, Dave, as a, a fighter or a boxer? Because I, I, I feel, having watched you a bit, that uh, you can do a well, bit of both. But, I mean, how do you think of yourself? In my amateur days, I used to be a real in banging fighter, but now Mr. Smith took me over and he's learned me to box a bit, which I've got to, to look after myself. Mm -hmm. Because in this game, you've, you you can't miss them all, but you've got to miss the really good ones. Right. Do you, do you go into the ring, David, feeling that you'd like to get it over as fast as possible? Do all boxers go in feeling that, that the sooner they can get it over, the better? Or do you like the sense of working for it and going through a few rounds? Just tell me what, you know, how you, how you go into a fight. I like to go in and well, I can't say take my time, but to, to wear a man down, you know, you can see him going steadily and, mm -hmm. and then hope for the finish. Uh. Right. Well, we're going to see a little bit, it, shortly, we're going to see a little bit of you uh, performing rather quickly, though. But I think first we'll turn again to Eric, take the thing chronological order. Um, just tell me uh, briefly, Eric, about winning the title, because you fought Dave Crowley, didn't you? He was yeah. the British lightweight yeah. champion. You won the title from him. Mm. That was a hard fight, I believe. Very, yes. Mm. Tell me a bit about it. Uh, well, there's very little I can tell. I, I was getting beaten, uh, well beaten, for the first, uh, I think, seven rounds until I eventually caught Dave, and uh, I, I made it up from, the, from then on. But he was a very, very clever, brilliant boxer, uh, very, very difficult to hit, and I was, uh, uh, at 18, I was still raw, I was still a kid, mm -hmm. and uh, I wanted to get it over, and uh, I must have missed him a thousand times, more personally. The reason I asked you about that was because I know very well that when you defended the title against Arthur Danaher, which was one of the most famous fights ever seen in this country, uh, it was very similar, wasn't it? Yes, uh, In yes. fact, you were well losing the fight in oh, the yes. stages. Mm. Just put yes. us in the picture a little bit about the early stages of this famous fight with Danaher, which was at Haringey in 39. Tell yes, well, there again, I was way behind. Danaher had a brilliant left hand, as you know. Uh, he'd beaten a, a tremendous amount of fighters, good fighters, Roderick and uh, Lefty Flynn. He'd beaten them all. Mm -hmm. um, um, this classic left hand had tremendous power behind it, too. And uh, I remember I, I'd lost a tooth. I'd bitten right through my tongue. My left eye was completely closed. I'd broken three bones in my right hand. And uh, my right hand kept hurting me. It was hurting me so much that whenever I got near enough to him, I would commit a sin in the fight. And I'd hit him on top of the head to um, numb my, my knuckles. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would um, they would go sort of pins and knees, get pins and knees in my hand for a time, well, and I could hit him again. Eric, you've set that fight up as well as it could be set up. So why don't we sit back now and watch your fight with Boone and Danaher, one of the most famous fights of all time in this country, February 1939, Haringey. Boone now very much on top of Danaher as we join it in the 13th. Round 13, and only two more to go. The champion's getting the upper hand, but Danaher doesn't know when he's beaten. again, and again a left to the jaw sends Danaha down. The referee counts close to the challenger's ear, for Danaha's head is roaring thunder. He's up again. What a fighter. Boone goes at him. And he's down again. Danaha's great heart carries him on. They fight to the end of round 13. And Boone is overcome with the great spirit of his opponent. Yes, it's the best of sportsmanship. British boxing is being done proud. But now it's round 14, and this was the last. Danaha goes down again. He wants to go on, but the referee puts an end to the fight to save more useless punishment. Boone is the winner, and what a finish. Boone keeps his title of lightweight champion on a technical knockout. But well done, both of you. It was a famous battle. <laughs>
Terrible eye you had there, Eric. It's a wonder today. I think that fight might have been stopped in Danaher's favour favour much earlier. I, th I feel sure it would, uh, Harry. In about the seventh round, when I was way, way behind on points, I think he would have. You had a very bad swelling though. Didn't they have to, to cut it? Or, and, uh, to yes, one of the uh, yes, one of the Guttridge uh, twins uh, cut it with a razor blade mm. and oh. sucked the bad blood. <laughs> Incidentally, a point of interest to people, I think, that the referee there was in fact the late W. Barrington Dorby, who of course later became very famous indeed as a BBC boxing summarizer. Yes, yeah. Marvellous fight, that. Um, of course, <coughs> that's a fight, I mean, you must have lived that in your mind a few times over the years, Eric, but of course, you must have seen that fight on film more than any man alive, because I believe that's one of the films you constantly show in these shows that you do around the country in, a, in aid of charity. Yes, it is, uh, Harry. Uh, 241 shows I've done for, for the Spastics and for Spina Bifida and various other charities. Um, that's just part of my three-hour program that I do for, for charity. Do you, do you get a tremendous reception for old fight films? Oh, it's amazing. The, yes, amazing. Well, I've, I've been getting audience of 600, 700 all over the country, and Scotland and Wales. Mm. Marvellous the, it's marvellous the way the working men's clubs and the Rotary and the Lions have, uh, have rallied round and, and really... I've raised, uh, about 7,000 pounds, uh, have you read? Um, yes, for them. Well, I think it's only fair. We've seen a bit of Eric Boone in action, and uh, it was pretty uh, exciting stuff. What do you think of that, Dave? Did, uh, have you ever seen that before? Oh, I've seen it before, yes, at the Chatteris Workmen's Club. It's a bit of a fight, oh, isn't that? It is, yeah. Now, what about your fight fairly recently with a young gentleman from Peckham called Alan Salter? Now, that was uh, quite a fight, wasn't it? Not from, yeah. from your point of view, anyway, not from his. Well, I come out from the, f for the first round, Luke, and Mr. Smith said, take your time and, you know, pick him up, Luke, and I... I'd just come out and jabbed him, and I was catching him with some lovely jabs, you know, and just brought my right hand over, and down he went, you know. Right. And from then on, it was just one way. It's probably the quickest fight you've had so far, as a pro, yeah, I suspect, think, doesn't yeah. it? I think it lasted about 1.25. Anyway, we don't need to speculate, because we can see it. Um, let's see Dave Green in action. We have to go back to November at the Royal Albert Hall, London, and uh, he did, in fact, make very short work of a man called Alan Salter from Peckham. Here's another appearance of the new sensation from Cambridgeshire in the white shorts, Dave Green from the village of Chatteris, where Eric Boone, Boy Boone, once came from, and uh, Dave Green is known as Boy Green in fond remembrance of Eric Boone. The man he's uh, boxing here, Alan Salter, rather taller, little thin on top, dark shorts. Alan Salter, 25 years old, three years older, comes from Peckham in South London, and uh, in his last appearance in the ring was fighting for the British Light Welterweight Championship against Joey Singleton. Uh, in this ring at the Albert Hall at the end of September. And he got stopped, Salter then, with uh, an injury to his left eyebrow in the ninth round. This is likely to be a hard fight for the pair of them. Dave Green in the white shorts, already in a short professional career, noted as a puncher, and there's proof of it with Salter on the floor. And that's in the first 50 seconds. Six the count. And Salter's not going to get through this. Two punches put him down again, both to the chin. Only a minute and five seconds gone already. Counts of six and eight now. And Green now not likely to let him off the hook. This is the explosive young puncher from Chatteris doing a boy boon all over again 40 years later. Third count. Six, eight and seven. And that's enough. And that's a minute and 25 seconds on my watch. That's the best win yet for Dave Green of Chatteris, only 22. That's his 10th successive win as a professional. That's the eighth inside the distance. And that's the best class man he's beaten yet. And that is an impressive win against a man who last time out was fighting for the British Light Welterweight title. No wonder the Green's excited. Andy Smith, the manager of Joe Bugner, also Green's manager, remaining stoically calm but must be thinking that he's got a real prospect in this kid. Dave Boy Green from Chatteris, only 22, 10 professional wins on the trot, and that's the best so far. Well, there we are. That's Dave Green in action, and that's the sort of uh, rather spectacular stuff that the young man is capable of, and clearly it's going to take him a long way in the game. Is there anybody, Dave, that you have modelled yourself on as a fighter? Is there any hero you've got that uh, you sometimes think I'd like to be like him as a fighter? No, not really, no. Mm -hmm. 
What about your ambitions in the game? What, what, what's at the back of your mind? Every time you go in and fight, what's at the back of your mind? Is well, what my you ambition want? is to be world champion. Mm -hmm. Do you think you can, you can get as far as that? Do you feel you've got that within you? I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. How long do you think that would take you to become world champion? Well, I would like to be a, the world welterweight champion. I think in perhaps 18 months, two years' time, I think that's a good chance. Now, there's the perfect example, you see, now, in all seriousness, and I believe you, I mean, you could do it in 18 months. Um, Eric, you listen to that, and you must have a quiet little smile to yourself, because uh, you fought for years and years and years before you even got to the British title. Mm. Um, and you never did get a chance at the world title, did you? No. And uh, no. I suspect that was because the war came down and shut your career right down in 30 months. Yes, it was, yes. That must have been a bitter disappointment. Oh, it was, yes. But I do think uh, David will do it. Um, I think David would, uh, would hold his own in any... Uh, uh, at any time, even if he were, you know, years back when there were very much um, many more fighters around, I still think he would do it. It's the same as uh, as Tracy is able to do it. I think the just the the two fighters with the right attitude toward the game. I know you're you're a great admirer of John Tracy, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yeah. Partly, I suspect, because he was he's your weight, isn't he? You must look on the world of weight yes, uh, yes, with a little yes. bit of affection. Yes, but I was uh, more taken. I was so proud of uh, Tracy waving the flag. Uh, he's asked, so proud. I've uh, uh, very, very seldom felt that way about, uh, mm -hmm. about, about a fight. That was a tremendous occasion that night. It, it, really, it really was. was. It, mm. was uh, it wasn't a bad fight, but on top of that, it was a, a tremendous patriotic occasion. Mm. Well, you, you were on the bill that night, Dave. So, you, yeah. you, you will remember it well. What did you think of, of all that sort of patriotism? I thought it was terrific, yeah. Would it's you like good. to be that sort of fighter that inspires a bit of uh, patriotism in yeah. British people? I think it's good for the country, yeah. I think it's good. Mm -hmm. Are you an admirer of John Stracy? Yeah, I think he's a good fighter. There, there. I think one of these days, yeah, you perhaps you cherish a little bit. I mean, you said you you might win the world title in 18 months. When you say that, are you thinking of John Stracy as being the world champion? Well, yes, I'm man, really. Uh -huh. I'd love to fight Stracy. Do you reckon you can beat him? Yeah, I do, yeah. That would be quite a... that in its way, you see. Now, this is very interesting. We're coming towards the end of this program, generations apart. And we could have a situation quite soon now, within the next two years, where a Dave Green, John Stracy fight, might create just the sort of interest yes, that Boone uh, and Danaher mm -hmm. created in 1939. Have you mm, thought exactly. about that, Eric? Uh, yes, uh, not until today, though, of course. But, uh, y yes, it would. And, and I think would be just as good or possibly a better fight. Because... Uh, uh, you have to go some to be a better fight than that one. <laughs> you had with Danaher. Well, it would be as good, anyway, because uh, <laughs> Stracy is terrific, David is terrific. I think... As a matter of fact, I think David is just about the only man I can think of in this country, or in any, in any, in any part of the world, that might, that would Dick Stracy. Mm. I would, uh, I would think David would be... It's got that same natural appeal, hasn't it? I'm yes, sure it would yes. have to mm. the public, that mm. sort of appeal. It's a natural fight, just as mm. Boone and Dana Harwood. Yeah. What do you think about that, Dave? Mm. Yeah. Yes? Be a good fight, yeah. Right, well, perhaps you'll remember this day when we all met in this uh, studio and talked generations apart, Dave Green and Eric Boone, both from Chatteris, all that remains to be said is thank you both very much and uh, continuing success in everything you do, Eric, and of course to you, David. Hope you realise your ambition and go on to become the world champion. Thank you both very much. Thank you very much. much.